you planning a trip to multiple countries over 90 days, then you're gonna to need to make sure you've got the right insurance. If you're planning a round the world trip, you're gonna be surprised that actually you're not covered under a single or even your multi-trip insurance policy. In this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the type of policy that you need, talk about some of the key features you'll find. I'm not gonna recommend any individual providers, but it's gonna be helpful for people who are planning a backpacking trip or a trip around the world. So let's jump into it. So the example trip I'm gonna be using and that I'm using for the example is similar to one I'm doing myself, which is a 12 month trip visiting around 22 countries and not planning to come back to the UK at all and visiting countries all over the world, including North America, South America, um, Asia, Australia, New Zealand. And so what you'll find is that a lot of people might have insurance that they get through their credit card or their bank and think, oh, that's fine, I have a multi-trip policy, I'll be covered to visit multiple countries or do multiple trips. But the way the insurers will see a, a journey like this, they'll see it as one very long trip because you continually go to different countries. They only class the trip as ending when you return back to your home country. What should you be expecting from a travel insurance policy? A couple of things I think that are key really, and overall it's about peace of mind. You want to know that when the shit hits the fan, you're going to be okay. So emergency medical treatment, you're going to get treated at the point of needing help in the country and they send an invoice afterwards, which then you and your insurer deal with. Uh, travel disruption, so you know, whether that's the flight's cancelled, delayed, you need extra accommodation or another flight to get you to continue on your destination, then insurance should usually cover that. Having legal fees in case there's any personal indemnity, in case you damage any property or you're liable to pay damages or for injury. Also, if baggage and belongings have become lost or damaged or stolen, then usually insurance will cover this. And also, if you need to take, cancel your trip, um, this might be due to a bereavement or other issue that's critical at home that you need to return for, you can usually get back some of the costs of what you've paid for and haven't used yet of your trip. And then finally, emergency travel and accommodation. So this is for if maybe you need to leave a country quickly because it no longer is safe or recommended for tourists by the government, Again, the insurance policy will usually help you to cover some of those costs that are unexpected. So in the UK, all insurance policies have a product document and this product document gives you a clear outline of what is and what is not included. So I would recommend having a look at those, um, especially if you do have policies at the moment and you're thinking to yourself, but I already have a policy. I don't need to get a different type of insurance for this trip. Just to go and check them out. Why would an annual multi-trip policy not be right for this type of trip? Well, these are policies that are generally for people who like to go on either short holidays, whether that's uh, over a weekend or a week, sometimes even up to two weeks for maybe three or four times a year. You can obviously use a multi-trip policy for more than that because it's an annual policy. But if you look at the detail, it says that no trip can usually be longer than 30 days. Some policies might allow you to have a 90 day trip. But generally, the way these work is that the insurer is expecting you to leave your home country, visit the destination and come back to your home country. And so they class that as the trip. So that does mean that, you know, you're not going to be covered if your plan is to go to maybe multiple countries over a period of time and kind of go around the world, so to speak. So are you finding this video useful? If so, hit the subscribe button below. There's going to be new videos every Monday. Come and be my travel companion over the next 12 months as I travel 22 countries. Why could I not just get a single trip policy? Because if this is just one long trip for 365 days, then surely I just get a single trip policy for one year. And again, it wouldn't work. Because if you look at the details of how the insurers actually cover on single trip policies, again, they will usually have a limit of how long those days can be. And the policies I've seen online from my research are around 30 to 90 days max. So again, if you're going away for more than three months, it's not going to cover you. Also, single trip policies usually only generally cover in one country. So if you're going to try and visit two or three or four places in that time, it probably won't cover you again. So the right type of insurance for people that are going traveling for over uh, nine months or are going to be visiting multiple countries is called backpacker insurance or extended trip travel insurance. Now, at first I thought, I'm not a backpacker. I'm way too old for that now. <laughs> but it's not about age. Uh, actually, in these backpacker insurances, they cover people up to the age of 80. 
It doesn't mean you have to have a backpack and only no suitcase. It doesn't mean that you have to stay in hostels. What it does mean, though, is that you can stay in multiple destination countries throughout the policy. Um, the expectation is you're not coming back to your home country uh, until the end of the trip. So when the policy starts, you'll be leaving your home country. And when the policy either is coming to an end or once you return home, then your kind of policy expires. Now, you can get these for up to 24 months. And you can also, they cover you if you're flying in, on single one-way flights into countries. One of the other benefits of this type of policy is that it's actually made for people who are going and exploring the world more than just your general holiday maker. So certain things like hiking is covered as standard generally within these policies. And you'll also find that there are other sports add-ons that you can add onto your package. For example, like uh, skydiving, bungee jumping, etc. And you may find that a lot of other activities are already included. Mostly with backpacker or extended trip travel insurance, you'll find that policies have either a basic, a medium, and a premium. So really look into the detail of what's covered based on what your expectation is and what you're gonna be doing throughout the year. Have you had a backpacker or a long-term travel insurance before? Then let me know in the comments below. I'd be interested to find out how that has been for you. So my top travel insurance tips. Number one, book your insurance as soon as possible. This is to make sure that if the cover does, this is to make sure that if the insurance does cover any um, issues with travel, then you're going to have that all covered because you bought your insurance and booked all of your activity just at the same time. If you book all your activity and then book your insurance at the last minute, the insurer may not potentially cover items that were booked before the insurance. Number two, compare and read the policies. Now, this is super important because you want to make sure you're getting a good price. So if you use a website like Go Compare or Compare the Market, they actually do have pages specifically for backpacker insurance comparisons. So you can see multiple providers side by side. Read the product sheet as well. So the product sheet and the policy document. Have a skim through and make sure you're clear and understand what it is and what it is not you're covered for. Also, read the reviews and make sure that they have good customer service and they're likely to pay out. Have a look at who is the actual underwriter in the insurance. Uh, a lot of the time, the brand you buy the insurance from is not the person who's paying out when you want to claim. So make sure they're a reputable, uh, make sure they're a reputable underwriter. In conclusion, I think it's quite important that you have this sorted out before you start booking a lot of your trip. So make sure that you put travel insurance higher up on your list if it's not there. And also, it's not the most exciting thing, I'll be honest, it's painful, but future you is gonna thank you for putting the effort in now and knowing what you are and are not covered for. So honestly, my big recommendation would just be to read, make sure you understand everything, and yeah, hope you found this helpful. If you would like to subscribe to more videos below, hit the button there, and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks.